All right, so welcome everyone to the Schuber seminar. Uh, as we announced over the email, this will be the last Schuber seminar of this academic year. Thank you for supporting the seminar uh, throughout the year. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you very likely next September. So in the when the next academic year starts. But for today, the last seminar, we're happy to have uh, Christian Lenard from uh, State University of New York in Albany. Uh, telling us about the Chevalet formula for the K-theory of semi-infinite flag manifolds and its ramifications. Please take it away, Christian. Thank you. Thank you, Leonardo. Thank you, everybody, for coming. So I think you can all hear, right, and uh, see the slides. Okay. Right. So, yes. Okay, so I, um, I will talk about what the title says, and... Um, uh, I believe some of you uh, heard me talk before about this. the Chevalet formula, a quantum K theory version. Uh, but the, the point I want to make today is um, that uh, this formula has many ramifications. So basically, uh, the, the first part of the talk until the break will be about um, the Chevalier formulas themselves. Uh, and then uh, the second part will be um, emphasizing the various ramifications. And uh, this is all joint work with my long-term collaborators, uh, Satoshi Naito and Daisuke Sagaki. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm happy to uh, give a talk at um, Naito's 60th birthday conference in, in Tokyo um, in, uh, in the coming June. So I'll start. Um, so we have the, uh, the usual root system notation. So G is some simple Lie group uh, over complex numbers, the torus, the Borel subgroup, uh, the unipotent radical. Uh, P is, as usual, the weight lattice. Uh, omega I, the fundamental weights. P plus the dominant weights. Q, the root lattice. Q check, the core root lattice. Alpha I, the simple roots. And then we have the group algebra of the weight lattice um, as a span, as the Z span of formal exponentials, e to the lambda for weights lambda. And we have the finite val group denoted by W throughout the talk, uh, SI the simple reflections, and W0 the longest element. And then we have the affine val group as well, the semi direct product of W with the, uh, with the um, core root lattice. So I'll start with the, with the classical Chevalier formula, um, and I'll state it for K-theory. Um, so in general, for T-equivariant K-theory of uh, G mod B, viewed as a module over uh, T-equivariant K-theory of a point, which is identified with the, the um, uh, group algebra of the weight lattice, um, so this K-theory module has uh, a basis of uh, Schubert classes indexed by Val group element, which are the classes of uh, structure sheaves of Schubert varieties. Um, and then we have over G mod B, um, a line bundle for any weight lambda, which is uh, this, uh, this product uh, of G with, uh, with a line. And, and then the Chevalier formula gives you the um, uh, the product of an arbitrary Schubert class with the class of this line bundle uh, expressed in the basis of Schubert classes. And, and here we have uh, these equivariant coefficients e to the mu, and then some integer coefficients. And the sum is over the Val group and uh, uh, the weight lattice. And the goal is to, is to give um, an explicit formula of this type. Uh, and, and there are several such formulas, and uh, one that I came up with uh, uh, in joint work with Alex Posnikov uh, is a combinatorial such formula, which is uh, based on uh, combinatorics of the, uh, of the affine Val group and the related Alkov picture. That's why it's called the Alkov model. Uh, and then we, with the Shimozona, we extended this uh, to Kashivara's uh, thick flag manifold for symmetrizable katz moody groups. So using an infinite version of the Alkov model. Uh, so uh, today's talk will be uh, about a Chevalier formula for 
the equivariant, T equivariant K theory of this uh, semi-infinite flag manifold corresponding to G, which will be denoted QG. Um, and uh, this flag manifold is a uh, non-standard version, non-standard affine version of the usual flag manifold. And uh, the combinatorial model used here is, uh, is a so-called quantum version of the Alcott model. Uh, and then um, we'll be able to use this formula to derive uh, a Chevalier formula for T equivariant quantum K theory of uh, G mod B and also for partial flag varieties. And as I said, uh, uh, the main point of my talk is to explain the many ramifications of these formulas, uh, including the solution to some longstanding conjectures. So I'll start with explaining the, the Chevalier formula for, for the semi-infinite flag manifold. Uh, so so this, um, uh, this manifold is defined, so QG rat is defined as the reduced in scheme associated to the, to the quotient that I, that I mentioned here. Uh, so this was defined by several people that I list here. Uh, and uh, and this this manifold also has uh, Schubert varieties, the semi-infinite Schubert varieties. So they are obviously indexed by elements of the affine bar group, denoted QG of X. Uh, but we'll concentrate on on a particular Schubert variety corresponding to the identity. So this is what we will denote QG throughout the talk, uh, and then this has a T cross C star action where C star acts by loop rotation. And therefore, um, there is an object uh, uh, called the T cross C star uh, equivariant K theory of this uh, semi-infinite flag manifold, um, which has the, the base ring is the, the base ring for T equivariant K theory of a point, this is Z mod P. And then also we have the variable Q and Q inverse corresponding to the C star action. And, and over this base ring, um, the module structure, uh, we have the, the, the Schubert structure over this base ring with the classes of the Schubert varieties denoted O, Q, G, X. Uh, and X here uh, is, uh, is an element of the so-called positive part of the FN well group. So you just take the semi-direct product of the finite well group with the uh, positive part of the core root lattice. So just, uh, just the positive integer span of the uh, simple core roots. So now a Chevalier formula here, it expresses like before the tensor product of, uh, uh, of an arbitrary Schubert class with the class of a line bundle corresponding to uh, a weight lambda in the finite root lattice. So if you want, this is a level zero weight. And uh, the combinatorial model is uh, based on uh, the so-called uh, quantum Bruja graph structure on the um, finite bulk group. So this is denoted QBG of W and uh, the edges of this uh, of this graph uh, join a uh, group element W with uh, W multiplied on the right by some reflection S alpha for some root alpha and the edges labeled by alpha. Uh, if the length increases by one upon this multiplication, so this gives you the, the covers of the usual Bruja order, or when uh, there is a large decrease in length and the decrease is by twice the height of the core root minus one, where the height, where the core root is expressed in the basis of simple core roots and then the height is just the sum of the coefficients. And uh, uh, this uh, structure originated in the Chevalier formula for quantum cohomology of flag varieties uh, due to Fulton and Woodward. Um, and, and then it was shown that it has a, a nice, it's, it's actually quite a natural structure because it has a natural lift to the uh, Bruja order on the affine valve group. So for instance, uh, for the symmetric group S3, uh, so the valve group of type A2, uh, we have here the six permutations and, and these are the covers of the Bruja order labeled by the roots alpha ij epsilon i minus epsilon j. 
And, uh, and then we also have these downward edges. The red edges are the quantum edges, which correspond to these uh, large decrease in length. And now to define the quantum Markov model, um, the input is uh, some weight lambda. And associated to lambda, we have to make a choice, a choice of a sequence of roots called the lambda chain. This is a sequence of uh, roots that I denote beta 1, beta m. They can be positive or negative. And uh, of adjacent alcoves that join the fundamental alcove A0 to its translate by negative lambda. And again, I stress here that lambda can be any weight, not necessarily dominant or anti-dominant. So here's an example in, in type A2. Uh, if the weight is, um, is, is, the one, is the one shown here, three epsilon one minus epsilon two, uh, then we have here in, in red are the positive roots, alpha one, two, one, three, and two, three. And, um, and then the triangles are the alcoves. Uh, the shaded alcove at the top is the fundamental alcove. And then the shaded alcove at the bottom is its translate by negative lambda. And, and then in blue, you have this uh, sequence of adjacent alcoves um, that join the fundamental to, the, to its translate. And, and then the lambda chain just records the, uh, the hyperplanes that are crossed. So there are six hyperplanes that are crossed by this blue path. And uh, you just record the, um, uh, the non-affine roots orthogonal to, to this hyperplane. So the, the first cross hyperplane is orthogonal to alpha one, two. So the first root in the lambda chain is one comma two or epsilon one minus epsilon two and so on. You have all the other six roots. And in fact, um, um, this uh, choice of, uh, of a lambda chain really corresponds to a choice of a reduced decomposition of the affine vowel group element that corresponds to the translated alcove. And you can make, obviously, other choices, and the model eventually will turn out to be independent of this choice. So feel free to interrupt me whenever you have a question. So, so we fix such a lambda chain, and then ri is the reflection corresponding to the root beta i. So then the objects of the model are subsets of positions in this uh, in this chain of roots. So just indices G, J1 through Js, uh, which uh, form a subset of 1 through M of, uh, of this uh, indexing set for the lambda chain. And then to each such sequence, and also uh, given another input, which is a vowel group element W, uh, we associate a chain of vowel group elements. So we start with this uh, W as being the first element or W0. Uh, this is not the longest element. This is uh, just denoted W0 rather than W circle. Uh, and then uh, we multiply W on the right with the reflections corresponding to positions J1 through Js. So in, in some position I, we have WI, which is WRJ1, RJI. And then at the end, we, we multiply with all these reflections, RJ1, RJS, and we get the last element in this chain, which I denote end of WA. Uh, but then we have a certain criterion for which subsets of positions we want to choose. And, um, and the, the criterion is that this uh, chain of uh, vowel group elements is actually a path in the quantum Bruja graph. So, so you start at W and you go up and down. There is, uh, there is no special condition. You go any way you want in the quantum Bruja graph, uh, but you have to multiply by reflections, uh, which come in the order given by the lambda chain. And we call such uh, such a set of positions uh, a W admissible subset, and uh, the collection of all W admissible subsets are denoted by uh, A of W and gamma. Gamma is the original lambda chain. So with this uh, with this object th with this pair W A, uh, we associate several statistics which uh, help us in the in the computations. So um, N of A is just the number of negative roots in, in the sequence. 
of roots. I have to stress that uh, if the so here if the if the um, weight is uh, is dominant, then negative lambda is anti dominant, uh, and then all these hyperplanes are crossed from the positive side to the negative side, uh, which is recorded as a positive root. So so all these roots you see here are positive roots, but if uh, if if you have some other arbitrary weight, then then these roots can be positive or negative. So n of a is the number of negative roots in this sequence beta j one beta j s, and then there is also a certain weight associated to this pair. Uh, and then we also have to keep track of the places in this uh, in this chain of uh, bio group elements where we make down steps. These are the quantum steps. So we record those positions where we have down steps. And this is a subset of A denoted A minus. And then there is a, also a statistic down of WA where we just sum over the positions where we have down steps and we sum the corresponding uh, core roots, but always taken with the positive sign. So uh, that's why I put absolute value of beta J check. So this is an element in the positive part of the core reflect. And then there is also a height statistic, which I'm not going to define precisely now. So with these uh, definitions, I can finally state, uh, state the Chevrolet formulas. So, um, so first for the semi-infinite flag manifold, so you take some arbitrary weight lambda written in the basis of uh, fundamental weights with some coefficients lambda i, which are integers. Uh, and then we take um, a lambda chain, beta 1, beta m. And then we also have to take uh, this uh, sequence of uh, partitions. So, uh, so there are i tuples of partitions where the partitions are indexed by the, uh, by the nodes of the Dinkin diagram or the indexing set for the simple roots. Uh, so there are partitions chi i. And, uh, and this is basically a partition, chi i is a partition of length at most, the maximum of lambda i and zero. So if, uh, if lambda i is negative, then the maximum is zero. So basically uh, there is no partition, it's the zero partition. And otherwise uh, there is a bound on the number of parts of this partition, which is lambda i. So then the, the theorem with the Naito and Sagaki is that if you take an, an element in the positive part of the FN well group, so an element X indexing a Schubert variety written as W times some translation, uh, then in the T cross C star equivariant uh, K theory of the semi infinite flag manifold, uh, we have this expansion. So you take the, an arbitrary Schubert class indexed by X with um, the class of the line bundle indexed by minus W zero lambda. It's more convenient to, to use minus W zero lambda. And, uh, and then you can write this, you expand this in the basis of Schubert classes because we want a Chevalier formula. And uh, this is written as a double sum. So the first sum is over uh, the objects of the quantum Elkov model. So over W admissible subsets. And uh, the second sum is over these, uh, these uh, tuples of partitions. So notice that when the, when the weight is anti-dominant, so when all these lambda i's are negative, then, uh, then we have no partitions. So the second sum completely disappears. And at the other extreme, when lambda is dominant, then, then we have here a, a big sum. Uh, and then we have the, the Schubert classes indexed by um, by these uh, affine vowel group elements written here. And then we also have uh, the C star equivariant coefficients Q to some power and uh, the usual equivariant coefficients uh, E to some power. And you notice that we have here all these statistics that I defined, uh, the height statistic, the weight statistic. Uh, there is also some statistic on these partitions, uh, I of chi and uh, and um, um, we also have the down statistic and uh, the, the end, end of WA is the last vowel group element in, in the chain of vowel group elements associated to some admissible subset. 
So, so we have some some. There is a question in the chat on uh, mm -hmm. what is the weight, what is the definition of the weight? Oh, the okay, the the definition of the weight. Okay, so let me explain that in a, in a more intuitive way. So, so if you look at this lambda chain, um, uh, an admissible subset consists of uh, of some choice of positions, and and that corresponds to some hyperplanes. So, for instance, here. Uh, you have the the third hyperplane and the sixth hyperplane are highlighted. So to get the weight, you basically think of this alcove path as a strip of paper, which you you put your thumb down at the at the start of it on the fundamental alcove, and and then you fold the strip of paper across these hyperplanes that you select. And you just see where the endpoint, this negative lambda, lands, and and that's essentially the weight. So so basically, you are you are applying some affine reflections corresponding to the to the chosen hyperplanes. Uh, you are applying some affine reflections to this uh, to this negative lambda, and and you are also applying the W at the very end because uh, because of we have this pair W A. So, so it's basically the weight is obtained by applying some affine reflections uh, to lambda and then the W. Thank you. Okay. So, so that's the formula uh, for the semi-infinite flag manifold. And, uh, uh, and then uh, we also go to quantum K theory um, so we have here many experts in, in quantum K theory. Um, so I'll just say that uh, quantum K theory was defined for a projective manifold X by given Tal and Lee. And um, the, the product structure is, is defined in terms of, uh, of some invariants of some numbers called the quantum K invariants of Gromovitan type, which generalize the, uh, the quantum cohomology invariants, the usual Gromovitan invariants. So for the for the flag manifold G mod B, you have to introduce uh, quantum variables QI indexed by, by the nodes of the Dinkin diagram. So we have some polynomial ring in the QIs. And, and then you have to tensor this with the with the with the base ring for usual T equivalent K theory of the flag manifold G mod B. So you get this base ring Z of Q and P. Uh, and then uh, the small quantum K theory of uh, G mod B is, is defined over the tensor product. So the additive structure is just the tensor product of the usual K theory, T equivalent K theory uh, with this uh, quantum base ring. Uh, so this was, um, this was studied by Anderson, uh, Chen, and Tseng. Uh, and, um, and then the algebra structure uh, is um, is given by, as I said, by the quantum K invariants of uh, Gromovitan type. And you have a basis, uh, the, the Schubert basis. Actually, it's uh, the structure sheaves of the opposite Schubert varieties, which I denote just by O upper W as usual. And, um, and we also have, um, have um, the line bundle here. And to, to express the Chevalier formula, we consider some degree, which is uh, some, um, some sum of, uh, of uh, the simple core roots. And then Q to the Xi is just, uh, is just the quantum variables raised to the, to the powers D1, Dr. So this is in the positive part of the core root lattice. And then uh, the Chevalier formula here, which I conjectured quite some time ago with Posnikov and, and is now proved, is that if you fix an index k, so a node of the Dinkin diagram, and uh, some negative omega k chain of roots, then the line bundle, class of the line bundle corresponding to the negative of the k fundamental weight with an arbitrary Schubert class can be expressed as a sum over these W admissible subsets, it's an alternating sum. So it's minus one to the size of A. And, and then we have the, the monomial, the 
uh, in the quantum variables, Q to the down of WA. Down of WA is the statistic that, uh, uh, that depends on the down steps in the uh, chain of all group elements associated to A. And, and actually down of WA is an element in the, in the positive part of the core root lattice. So Q to this power really means what I, what I wrote on the first line. And then we have the equivariant uh, co uh, coefficient e to the negative the weight of WA. Uh, and then we have the, the Schubert class uh, indexed by the end of WA, the last element in the chain of all group elements associated to WNA. So, so this, is, this is a simpler formula than the one I showed before. And then there is a similar formula for multiplying the um, uh, a divisor class, a class corresponding to a simple reflection SK with an arbitrary Schubert class, uh, because we have this relation between the, uh, the class corresponding to a simple reflection and the class corresponding to the line bundle um, in, um, for the weight negative uh, Kth fundamental weight. And, and the proof is uh, is now easy because uh, we have this uh, breakthrough of uh, of Kato, um, which uh, which is a, a long story that uh, started with the Peterson isomorphism between uh, the uh, the homology of the uh, F. Grassmannian and the quantum cohomology of G mod B, and then this was extended to K theory, first uh, stated by. Uh, Lamli, Michal Chen, Shimozono, and Ikeda, Ivao, Maeno. Um, and uh, this uh, this Peterson isomorphism, as I said, involves the F. and Grassmannian, but, uh, but then Kato also brought into this picture the semi-infinite flag manifold. So, so all these three objects are related. So for, for us, what it means is we want this relationship uh, between the T-current quantum K theory of G mod B and, uh, and some part of the Tierkovarian K theory of the semi-infinite flag manifold, we have a Z of P module isomorphism between, between uh, these objects that respects products. So, so by taking the Chevalier formula for the semi-infinite flag manifold, we can just transport it to the quantum K theory of G mod B through this uh, isomorphism. And, and that's how we get this Chevalier. So I think, uh, I think it's, it's a good time to stop here because uh, uh, then I will, I will show the various ramifications of, uh, of these two formulas, these two Chevalier formulas. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, let's take a five minutes break. Uh, 504 on my, my watch. 